Hi everyone, Lori Marie here, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. A gorgeous day. Uh, Hudson is waiting for his second walk of the day, but I wanted to get this intro done so that I could uh, post the publish the video. So we're working on our third technique in our new altered book. Very very fun. I do want to do a shout out to some uh, contributors. Thank you so much. Some generous contributors, uh, Terry. Loretta, Hetty, and Judy. So thank you so much. You know the money goes to uh, good use. Either paying the water bill or buying supplies. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> Except Linda says she pays the electric bill so we can <laughs> have that light in the morning. So that's adorable. Anyway, I had fun on the table today. Uh, mixed it up a little bit with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, for something new, not really. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, yes. But uh, <laughs> anyway, fun stuff. So uh, I don't have anything else to tell you. Not today. All right, see you on the table. All right, this is the project that we're going to play with today. My workspace is nice and full of sanding block stuff. So, uh... It has an acetate window, and it's ready for focal points here and here. So this was a lot of fun. I did uh, add to the supply list, I added um, watercolor paint and spray ink. But I think that that's all that I added to the supply list. You'll need an X-Acto and a ruler. I think I said ruler. An X-Acto to cut your window out. But uh, other than that, I think we captured everything on the supply list. All right, let's go over the supplies that I think we're going to need. Chances are I will add on as we go, as what frequently happens. So, of course, you'll need your Stabilo and your brush. You will need a stencil of some sort. Now this is, I'll show you that last, um, the Art Varnish, three cheap acrylic paints, Mod Podge, Gesso, oh no, 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 um, Texture Paste, Palette Knife for the Texture Paste, a ruler if you need to rip things. I've got some old book text for underpants, and then I've got bits and pieces of colorful uh, background pieces that we used last time. I have some left, so we're going to use those today, and of course our book. Now this I want to talk to you about because this is, can you see that? This is an acetate sheet that I took <clears throat> a few pieces of goodies and I put them on my printer and then I ran the um, the acetate through the printer so the background was a music sheet a map a piece of uh, French book this is a little leaf down here and then this is some of the Tim Holtz tissue paper here so I kind of made a collage right on the acetate and this is going to be a window in our book so that was kind of a fun experiment. And our book. So I have our book open to the threads, the strings in the middle of the signature. And I'm going to remove two pages. And I'm going to set those aside because I'm going to be using them. And I am going to go back to the pages that we finished before. So this is our pocket pages. And that's sturdy enough that I can build right on there. So I'm not going to do anything to that page. And this page I'm going to go ahead and glue uh, four pages together here. One, two, three, and four. Alright. So if I grab my brush and my Mod Podge, a gorgeous day outside. 
one, two, three, and four. So I will start here. And I will glue these pages together. You guys have done this with me a million times. At least. Got a little wrinkle in there. those next two pages down. Alright, so I have my four pages glued together here, knowing that these will be glued down here, keeping this nice and strong in our book. Alright, so I'll be working on this, which is already stabilized by the next one. Four pages on this side. I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to bring these pages back in, and I'm going to glue them shut. You guys know that I always start off with an idea, hoping it'll work. <laughs> <clears throat> and part of um, mixed media, part of art, is to always be in problem solving. We create the problems and then we figure out how to make it work. Now some of you have asked me if I water down my Mod Podge. I do not. I order my Mod Podge by the jug, so I need to pour it into something else. And this little jar does not spill. So for that, I am grateful. All right, I am going to decide which, because these are going to go together with a window in there with the acetate. All right, so I am going to just put few little underpants around the edge of that so that I don't see that white page. Do this, don't do this, totally up to you. And I am going to be working on the entire sheet, although I know that I am going to be cutting out that center because that center is going to become a gorgeous tag in the making. So I'm just going to go around both pieces with some book text underpants. So I have these two pages covered just on this side. This side is as it was, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of Mod Podge just down one side of it. Oh, while I was working on these, I remembered we're going to need some uh, black masking tape. You can get that on the Amazon link, or that will help you get to, to some black masking tape. If you go in the notes below the video, there's an Amazon link. You can go to that and see the products that I use. Now, when I make the underpants, I do take the white edge off just with my ruler. It was so funny, one comment on the um, on my videos, <laughs> somebody said that a ruler was used for more than just ripping things. I thought that was pretty cute because I don't measure much. So I just rip off the white edge and then use that underpants so that that edge is, uh, is gone. All right, I'm going to bring my book back in. These are the pages that I've glued together. These are the pages that were sturdy from before. And um, I'm going to put some underpants around the edges of these. Just so that we don't have a bunch of uh, 
white page being a distraction. So, and then I'll put the underpants around that, hide that string. Not that I mind that string showing, because I don't. But since we're doing this, All right, put your underpants, ooh, had a little something something there. That's kind of fun. Looks like it was a plant. We'll just leave that there. All right, I have underpants on my two-page spread. I'm going to bring this page back in. I glued this together on the inside, and that part that I glued together, I am going to tape it onto here with some black masking tape. So I'll put my black masking tape on that glued edge. I am working on a Teflon sheet that I have absolutely cut up to death. I want a little bit of wiggle room there. Another piece of black masking tape. The reason I'm doing this now is so that we can paint this and put some fun colored uh, underpants on it to have it blend in rather than to be just the black masking tape. <clears throat> Which I don't mind it being the black masking tape. Oh look, texture, yay. Beautiful. All right, so I am going to be, open up. I am going to be working on these three pages at one time. And I'm gonna take some paint and I'm just gonna put some paint on each page. Woo. Well, there we go. And some varnish, some of the art varnish. This dilutes the paint, but it doesn't affect the integrity of the paint like water would. And I'm just going to smush and smear that paint on those three pages. Very carefully. <laughs> Might be. Oh, I thought I was working off screen here, but looks like we can stay on screen. Relatively dry, I'm going to put a piece of deli sheet there, wax paper, baking paper, parchment paper, whatever you want to put in there just to protect that a little bit. It may create a little bit of uh, texture, and as we know, I embrace that, I welcome it. A little bit of acrylic, same color as you were working on. On the other pages, smush that around. Gorgeous, and let that dry. 
That's the hard part. Okay, that is virtually dry. My hands are looking gorgeous. I'm going to bring my colorful bits and pieces in. These are for color only. Please do not pick things out that you want to see because you're not going to see them. They are just part of the underpants. Okay, so I'm just going to put down some fun bits and pieces. That's not so fun. And we will open that up. And we will do the same thing to this three page spread. Just add some color to each page. I am not concerned whether these wrinkle or not because I do embrace all the texture that we can get on these pages. Oh, sanding block. Forgot to say sanding block. You'll need your sanding block. We do not need for that to dry. We can just keep moving forward. We're going to put some of our second color of acrylic paint on and some of our art varnish and our gift card or credit card or whatever you're using. Oh, this does not want to red so easy. A little bit older paint. That's okay. We will coax it into submission. bit of dry time. All right, when these three pages are virtually dry, you'll put your deli sheet there. <coughs> Little tickle, sorry. Some acrylic, some varnish. My pink paint is old, so it doesn't like to really mix in with the varnish. Yep, 
let it dry. All right, so the front is uh, pretty much dry. Can you see some of my wrinkles? Love that. I love that. All right, stencil time and texture paste time. My texture paste is nice and thick. And I'm not going to put it every place. And let this dry and then I'm going to do that to the inside pages. I wonder if I can work on the inside pages now. I wonder if I, I bet I can. Just gonna flip that open, let that dry, and I'll work on these two pages. Now really what I should do is go wash this, but yeah, not right now. Now you will see that my texture paste is very thick. Adjust yours to however you want it. I happen to like mine thick. I can control the spreading a little bit better than if it's too moist. Then it tends to go places where I didn't intend for it to go. But do what feels good. because I am here, yes, for inspiration only. I get to give you the ideas, a little bit of guidance, and then I get to see what you come up with. Which the village, oh, isn't that gorgeous? Which the village comes up with some pretty amazing stunts. Right, just keep working through. Now this is the first page we did. It's nearly dry. So Danger Will Robinson, I am gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna go forward. If it gets smushed, I'm okay with that. It's not gonna go any place, it'll just get smushed, right?
Oh, we're stuck. And we're good. Oh, my stencil's getting so fat with all the texture paste. It's funny. This dries really well and really like cement, so you'll want to clean your stencil when you're done. I'm not good about a lot of things, but I'm good about cleaning my stencil after I use the texture paste on it. Because it gets hard. Okay, let's see how much damage we did to the other side. No damage at all. All right, we are going to let that dry. Go clean up a little bit. All right, my villagers, change in plan. This is all gorgeous with the texture paste. I am grabbing my ochre watercolor. One of my favorites. And water. You guys know I like it juicy. Oh yes, please. Oh, I must have more. Must have more. Yes, please. Happy girl. So on all three pages, also on the front page. I'm gonna let this <laughs> gonna let this dry a little bit before I turn that over. Look at these three pages. Aren't they beautiful? I forgot what it looked like before. Ha! Huh. Love that. Just taking some of that ochre watercolor and painting the front page. And we'll let that dry. Now you know that I'm taking a heat stick to every, every time I say let it dry, oh yeah, I'm taking a heat stick to it. Just don't get too <laughs> Don't get too close or you get, might get more texture than you thought you would. All right, when your pages are dry and cool, cool is important, <laughs> you're going to take your sanding block in and you're just going to knock down some of those edges. All right, so I'm tearing some of, some of the underpants up. Love that. This blump of uh, texture paste was not dry, so when I went through it, took it off, 
Yes, I'm happy with that. Not just okay, but actually happy with that. So that's the way the first page looks. Let me see if I can get some of the dust off it. We're going to do one more layer of something something. But isn't that gorgeous? Oh, yes it is. All right, sanding this, this, and this. Okay, everything is sanded and gorgeous. Remember, these two pages are still like that. I'm going to take my scissors in, just snip off that extra tape. I'm bringing in a blue spray ink. You know, spray inks are always so unpredictable. It's a love-hate relationship with <laughs> this, the inks. All right, I'm going to let that dry before I try and do the front. All right, here's our glorious three pages. And it's funny because at each stage I think, oh, that's enough. That's beautiful. Just leave it. But look at this in comparison to this. Now this was absolutely gorgeous when we were there. But look, we just bumped it up another notch by adding the spray inks to it. So, so away we go. Okay, so there's our, our last page. Now as you can see, it overlaps into the center a little bit too much so that when it closes, it uh, buckles. So that's not going to work. So what I need to do is I need to take some of that edge off. And I am so not willing to cut that square with a, uh, with a pair of scissors. So I'm going to take my X-Acto in and cut that. I will put something protective between those pages. That's always a good idea. So I will go down here, just kind of score it. Let's see if I can rip that off. And then we will catch that with the um, with the stabilo. So that is not a problem. Oh, that's good. That side's good. We'll leave that. That's good. Very good. Okay, so let's make sure that that fits better. Yes, that fits fine. All right, now let's bring our acetate sheet back in. I want to see what's my favorite part of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We shall see. What we're going to do is we are going to cut a window in this. And you can decide however big you would like that window. I'm going to put that cardboard back in there. And I will just use my ruler as a guide. See? I use it more for more than just ripping. And I'm just going to score that.
You know it's not going to be straight. You cannot expect it to be straight after all our time together. Now the Mod Podge between these two pages is still a little damp, so this is tearing quite easily. If it's all the way dry, it might be a little bit more difficult to tear out. So work with that however you want. Now I'm going to go in here and just score that back page. Perfectly, of course. We would have it no other way. I just don't want the edge to be too neat. That's why you see me kind of monkeying with it. I don't want it to be perfectly cut edge. Would not go with my page very well. With my style. Then we have gorgeous tags here, right? Got it. Okay. That's kind of fun, huh? This will be upside down, but it'll give us an idea. Yeah, kind of like the music paper better. That's kind of fun. This is kind of fun down here with this, these words on here too. Maybe that's what we'll do. Alrighty. So, you are going to go in there. someplace in here, right? Someplace in here. Oh, if we don't put that AAA in there, that would be nice. Do we need it? Someplace in about here. Are we up that high? Nope, not quite. Now we are. And one final cut. Oh, there we go. That could be used for something else. Beautiful acetate window. Okay, we're sticking out a little bit too much there. Not a problem.
Nice. So if we have a fun image behind here, which you will at some point in time, that will look like that. Gorgeous. All right. Mud Podge. Mud Podge time. Now there are a couple of reasons that I um, have done it in this order. One was uh, to cover up that black tape a little bit rather than having that totally exposed. And second was to keep the acetate window as clean as possible. Because once you get, see this Mod Podge on here? Once you get the Mod Podge on there, it's very hard to not have that streak, unfortunately. So, that is why I chose to do it in this order. I am inspiration only, and you can do it however you would like. Okay. Gorgeous. The only thing that's left to do now is to, I'm going to leave this open so that it doesn't get anything on it. Uh, the only thing that's left to do now is to stick below the edges. Pretty darn cool. Okay, what I've decided to do is to sit on it. <laughs> I can still sit on my book because there's not a lot of dimension going on yet. So I am going to go ahead and sit on this and make sure that those pages are glued together quite well. So here are our gorgeous backgrounds with an acetate window. I'm done sitting on it. And I'm just going to take my Stabilo, good to the last drop, and I'm just going to go around the edges of the pages. all around all the pages. Give it that nice smoky finish that we have all come to love. And then I'll go on to this page. Last little bit of stabilo here around the frame of that window. What I have to say is I'm very happy with the way that that black masking tape blends in, it becomes part of the piece, part of the stabilo here as well. Very happy with that. A little bit of paper towel here from me sitting on it. So I'm very happy with this. Yes, I am. So go create, go play, go have fun. <laughs>